Traditionally, shaping root canals has been an art form. Uh, either we did a serial step back technique with multiple instruments, 12 to 18 instruments, each of them fitting further back from the other as they got larger in diameter, or we do the stop preparation with increasingly larger files at the end of the root canal uh, prep, and both of these techniques created challenges for us. Fortunately, today's conceptual advances and our uh, instrumentation advances have made both of these techniques more accessible to uh, clinicians, both uh, generalists as well as specialists. Let's look at the stop preparation, which to this day is probably the prevalent uh, preparation recommended worldwide. So the stop prep does not have an S in the second word. The stop prep looks like this. We have a root, and here's the end of the root canal. We have a canal in here, kind of like this. Stop prep, we find length. We negotiate, make an access. We cut uh, till we reach the pulp chamber. We take our small negotiating files, we get to the end of the root canal with radiographs and or apex locators. We measure the length of the canal. We step back somewhere, depending on the clinician's des desire, a uh, half millimeter, three quarters, a millimeter short of where we perceive the terminus of the canal to be. And then we cut larger and larger shapes until we get a minimum of usually a number 35 K file to that depth. Um, and then after that, there was a recommendation that we use some circumferential filing of these uh, K files, maybe go up to a, a 40, a 45, and a 50, and create a little bit of midroof flare. And then we would take Gage Glidden burrs, as many or as few as you want, but we would do the final shaping coronally with that. Now, what did that give us? Well, in a straight canal, things worked out pretty well. In curved canal, not so well. Um, and uh, I don't have anything against stop preparation, but uh, it is a little bit more uh, technique sensitive than tapered preps as they're done today. Let's take a look at what those sensitivities are. Okay, if I have this terminal portion of the root canal here, that's great. This is a, basically a, uh, this is called a stop here. And, um, it's an intentional ledge, just the right point. But if we misdetermine length and are, we're a half millimeter longer than we thought, or the canal's a half millimeter shorter, now we don't really have any resistance form. We have a relatively large passageway going through the end of the root canal, and not much taper if it was made with an 02 or an 04 uh, file. So uh, length determination, really critical. Um, if you do the apical preparation without an apex locator, I think you're making life way too difficult and your results are going to be less consistent than you could achieve otherwise. Also, I would recommend that we do the stop preparation in the reverse order that I was taught, and that would be to do what we do with all the other instruments uh, at hand. Here's the access cavity, is do crown down. Shaping. What does crown down shaping mean? It means we're going to it means we're going to cut shape coronally first and then we're going to cut shape in the middle of the root after that and the last thing we do is finish the apical preparation. Okay? The reason this is superior way to do it is the end of the root canal is the most fragile anatomy. It's narrow, it can have little subtle or obvious kinks in it, and uh, if we're doing the apical prep first, our instruments are giving us very little tactile feedback. When we cut coronal and midroot shape, then our apical files are giving us excellent feedback because they're usually cutting over a limited, uh, a limited distance of their flutes. We could probably feel, after the coronal shape is done, we could probably feel our apical files clicking past the terminus if our length had been determined incorrectly or if it had changed during preparation. Uh, how does this translate into a technique that uh, takes advantage of all our current advances in technology and our instrument designs is that I would start my stop preparation with like a 2006 
file to length, to our estimated length with the apex locator in there. The second thing I would do is I would remeasure length determination to make sure it's correct. And then after that, I would cut a succession of files at that determined length for the stop. And if we go to rotary instrumentation, for instance, the 0.04 profiles, they have rounded tips, they have uh, landed blades, and when we cut the 20 and the 25 and the 30 and the 35 to our apical stop length, the back part of the file is giving us a shape that is more uh, appropriate for a, uh, a system-based approach of obturation and for the treatment. Uh, my recommendation, if you prefer an apical stop preparation, typically that is for uh, clinicians who want larger apical preparations. Um, I think you can get excellent results. It's a little bit more time consuming, requires a few more instruments, but you know, if you use the right instruments the right way, you're gonna like the results. How would we do this more effectively? We would start by doing crown down instrumentation. I would start with some type of a small rotary file, nickel titanium rotary file. Um, you could use a 1506 vortex, and when we say 1506, we mean uh, 0.15, a 15 at the tip, and the second number, the 06, is the amount of taper uh, back per millimeter of length of the canal. So 1506, it's flexible in the end, it's got enough shape that it'll flare the orifice. We can use a non-landed blade there and get a really nice result. So in a route like this, I'm going to cut my access. I'm going to uh, initially put a small, could be a uh, S1, uh, Pro Taper, it could be a, a 1506 Vortex. Vortex is a brand new uh, instrument on the market. Um, we could use uh, uh, several other instruments, uh, non-landed instruments in, in this initial phase, and that is to create a shape through a major part of the root canal system. You don't have to get to length with this. Okay, so we call this initial shape. And whether you're making a tapered or a stop preparation, you're going to have the same initial shape. Because once we cut an initial shape, then we can measure the terminal diameter of the canal. We can make a, an excellent decision about what size the final prep should be and where it should be because we did this part of the, coronal the, part of the shaping first. The second part is we are going to uh, gauge. Now this assumes the canal has been negotiated to length. We're going to gauge and measure what the terminal diameter of the canal is. If we put a, uh, a 15 and a 20 and they go through, but a 30 stops at length, that means it's 0.3 millimeters there. Now we know we're going to have, if we're going to create an apical stop, we've got to have a size larger, several sizes larger than that to create the resistance form we need. And then last, I would do a final apical uh, actually, I would say final prep, and I would say we're call it. So, and then next we would say uh, finish the prep. What that entails with the stop preparation is we're going to take a 30, 35, and probably a 40, maybe a 45, to a length we've determined or confirmed is short of the end of the root canal. Back here, 0.5 to 1.0, you choose. And at that point, we're going to cut a, as I said here, 30, 35, 40, 45. And we've got a nice stop. Because we did it as the final part of the procedure, we have more control. We have the ability to reconfirm links so that we don't make a link determination error, which is really a problem with this. Uh, with the stop preparation. And if we use uh, some of our new rotary instruments, uh, actually old ones, but newer than this uh, shaping objective, we can use uh, landed blades will work really well to finish the apical diameters. When we're cutting up larger in sizes, we need the, the aid of a landed blade. A landed blade looks like this. Okay, this is in cross section. Okay, so instead of a blade having sharp triangular edges, for instance, 
it has a little part of the original circumference remaining. This makes it uh, less aggressive and more true to the original canal path and we will stay centered better. Um, one of the instruments that I really like for this is uh, GT Files, GTX will do this uh, and uh, 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 for the initial enlargement, so that's for this. For the final, we want to have them in ISO sizes, so I recommend the they're called 04 tapers, 0.04 tapers. They're profiles, the original Tulsa Dense Ply instruments. And they go up actually in smaller increments than, than the, the normal 25, 30, 35 sizes. And we'll just take those to length in an 04 taper. Then we have that final file, let's say it's a 45. That file has an 04 taper. It will make the final shape all the way back to the access cavity and then for the first time we will have a stop preparation that has uh, uh, been cut to allow a system-based approach to further treatment because the last file makes the shape for the whole length of the, the, the canal form. So if you are one of the many clinicians who still prefers to do the apical stop preparation, uh, I don't have an issue, you can get great results. It's a little bit more technique sensitive than taper preps uh, currently are. However, um, the most important thing to remember if you're doing the stop prep is to reverse the order that at least I was taught in. And what that means is instead of doing the apical preparation first, when we have the least amount of control over our instruments, we're going to do the apical preparation as the last part of the procedure. Instead of doing that and then doing the gauge glidden work last, we're going to do the coronal enlargement in a crown down from coronal to apical and uh, make more sh shape in the middle of the, bo in the body in the coronal part of the root canal so that we have better control of our apical instruments and that's the whole key. So we come in here. Uh, I like to uh, start with a rotary file with a small tip diameter, a decent taper, perhaps an 06 taper. Uh, for this, I call this initial shape. For initial shape, we can use aggressive instruments because we're not trying to take them to the end of the root canal. We're not using instruments with large tips. So uh, uh, um, rotary instruments, any unlanded instrument of, or say, a 20 or a 3006. Just so you know, this is the tip diameter and this is the taper. Okay, so 06. Uh, K files are no two taper. This is three times as tapered. So once I go in with a 2006, maybe near length, in an anterior tooth like this, uh, that's not uh, that surprising. Uh, at this point, I would confirm length. And I would see if I can get a sense of apical diameter that we're left with here or that we have to deal with here. Okay, what is that terminal diameter? Because that's going to help us determine what the final preparation size should be. So first, I would recommend you get an apex locator on your apical instruments, your 15 and your 20, reconfirm length. We're going to step back from there at least a half a millimeter. Okay, and we're going to go up in size, file size. So here we go, apical prep. Apical slash uh, coronal. We're going to do that at the same time. And that'll help us finish up. So if this measured, for instance, at 0.3 millimeters, a 30K file just bound right near the end of the root canal, stepping back here, I would want to go at least uh, several sizes, probably to a 35, 40, 45, maybe a 50 here. That's not... Uh, unusual for an anterior tooth. And if I use a rotary, landed rotary file here to make that final apical prep and it's got enough taper to cut the shape on the rest of the canal sides, uh, sides then uh, we've actually created a system-based approach to the stop preparation, okay? System-based approach requires one finishing file but it's got to be a finishing file for the whole length of the root. 
That way that file defines that geometry all the way down, that we have an easier time fitting cones and knowing what the appropriate taper is, easier to irrigate, um, easier to fit our pluggers or our condensers uh, regardless. Okay, so let's talk about tapered shaping objectives or taper preparations. Taper preparations uh, popularized by uh, Dr. Herbert Schilder, Chairman of the Department of Endodontics at Boston University for many, many years. And his technique for creating taper preparations was called the serial step back technique. That technique required that we use a series of K files inc of increasing diameter in that they would fit further and further back from the end of the root canal. We'd have enlarging diameters and thereby create a continuously tapering preparation form. Okay, And so typically uh, in a maxillary and anterior tooth, we probably have a 30 at the terminus and then uh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, it's a big root, maybe a 70 in here, and they're going to all fit to a different distance back from the end of the root canal. Okay, And the way that we get this accomplished is we take 30 in, 35 would be stepping back maybe a millimeter. Each of these, the first pass through is going to step back in large increments as we clear the end of the root canal, irrigate, and then go through the series of instruments again. It's called recapitulation. Recapitulation means going through this several times. Um, when I used K files or HESRM files, typically uh, it was two to four uh, recapitulations to create the shape that we want to come up with. Okay? But there's a taper prep. Uh, it had the advantages of uh, forgiveness of link determination errors. If we're long with our 30 and 35, it didn't matter because our 40, 45, 50 had a tapered resistance form back from where we mistakenly assumed the terminus was. Um, this has gotten even easier now that we have very files. Um, back in the day, uh, this used to be really challenging to teach. Um, I actually, I got f frustrated and uh, uh, with the difficulties of teaching and, and I kind of asked the embarrassing question, why don't we have files that come with different tapers on them? Um, found out right after uh, I got my first prototype made in stainless steel is that if they had wide tapers, they would be stiff as boards. But then serendipitously at the same time that I was into my third uh, variably tapered file prototype, nickel titanium comes on the scene. Nickel titanium or nitite as we say. It's revolutionized endodontics because it's super elastic and very tough, very resistant to cyclic fatigue errors. So, doesn't matter which one we use, we're going to be generic about this conversation, but suffice to say, if you have variably tapered files that are effective, you can start off and uh, cut a shape with one or two instruments many times because the file has the full taper along its length. Um, so, uh, the steps in a taper preparation are after negotiating the canal, um, we're going to cut initial shape. Same as with a stop prep. And uh, some file it could be in a small root. The first file could be a 2006, relatively small tip diameter, relatively minor taper. Or if it's a central incisor, a cuspid tooth, we're probably talking about something more along the lines of a 30. 06 or 3008 and we're going to cut that to or near length and so the the majority of that canal shape has already been completed with the first file or two or three depending now we have the room coronally to to determine reconfirm our length length determination reconfirm and to get a sense of apical diameter. Because whatever that apical diameter truly is, we need a shape that is, 
has a tip diameter of that or larger. So if this was a 30 and we cut a 3008 to length there and we determined this still was 0.3 millimeters, we would be finished with it. But that's, if not, we add one more file. Finish file. And so let's say uh, the end of the root canal is larger than a 30 and uh, I might use a 4008 to finish it. And it's got that shape all the way back. And so once again, we're system-based approach, which, you know, that's, that is a non-negotiable for me in picking any system that I'm going to use. Okay. One of the advantages of taper preparations is we can be long, if we have landed blades, we will have a round but larger than we intended April uh, size, uh, but it will be still round and taper behind there. If we're short and we have a radius tip, especially with landed blades, there's no ledge, we just need to re-extend our preparation if we find out at the end of the procedure that we were in error short. Um, in the curved canal, one of the great things about taper preparations is that in this apical area, which is so curved, okay, canals typically accelerate in curvature, Do you really want to make a large apical preparation there? Okay. Now, if all the canals we treated had huge apical diameters to them, we would have no choice. But many of these small curved canals, in, especially in small molar roots, are very tiny. They may have a terminal diameter of 0.15 to 0.2, maybe 0.25 at the most if it's a vital case. So if we accept that we're going to have taper preparation, that means we, need to, we don't need to take as large an instrument to full length in the preparation, meaning that we have a more flexible instrument, it's easier to avoid damaging the root canal system with a more flexible instrument, and <clears throat> it also usually requires dramatically fewer instruments to cut that final preparation. And today's, with today's technology, we're talking about one to four instruments, one to four file shapes, and that's really ideal. Uh, before I talked about the art form of shaping and how we had to do serial step back instrumentation with 12 or 18 different instruments and uh, recapitulate through these 18 instruments maybe three or four times taking half an hour to 40 minutes. Today one to four instruments and we cut, we're cutting more precise shapes than we ever did with the serial step back because one file completes the shape from terminus all the way back to the orifice and again this is what sets us up to be system based. Let me remind you, system-based, what does it require? Any technique you see that has more than one instrument making the final preparation geometry is not system-based. Any instrument that you see that is not landed and is used around a curve is not going to create a system-based approach because that file will make some preparation size larger than the instrument. If you're using landed blades and uh, you are uh, managing them correctly, uh, fewer instruments and very, very little chance of, of destroying the end of the root canal. So let's review the advantages of the taper preparation. Okay. Uh, forgiving of leg determination errors. Uh, fewer files. Fewer steps. Um, uh, less transportation. Uh, <laughs> uh, only a couple of sizes of gutta perch and paper points. Uh, my practice, I cut 6, 06 taper preps in small roots and 08s in large roots, so I only need 06 and 08 cones. Uh, fewer implements. Um, and then finally, um, this is a little bit of an or organic uh, granola head uh, California look at it. It's, it, it matches 
it's a shaping objective that matches the organic shapes, the natural shape of root canals, of root canal system morphology. Okay, so when we have a preparation objective that matches the way root canals look, in fact, when they're first completed in formation, they can have a perfect taper through their length. Um, if our preparation objective it matches that, then it's my you know, philosophy that we're going to have fewer problems. It's going to take less work to get an ideal result. So um, with this thought in mind, let's look at the advantages of the taper preparation. Okay, very forgiving of length determination errors. Okay. Two, uh, less transportation. Why? Because we need smaller instruments going to length. The smaller instruments are more flexible, and so there's less problem with them moving off the original path of the canal. We need fewer f files. With today's technology, it's one to four uh, rotary shaping files or more like five to maybe 12 or 13 instruments needed to create an ideal stop prep. Fewer files, uh, fewer size, size materials like get a percha, paper points, etc. cetera. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, also fewer steps procedurally okay and then finally the reason I think that these first four are true is because it's a natural shape tapered shape is a natural shape what do I mean by natural if you happen to access a 19 year old kids lower first molar and you go in and you gauge the one of the mesial canals most likely you're going to find that there's a constrictor at the end and it's very nicely and perfectly tapered all the way back up because that's what they look like when formation of the root structure is complete. When we have a shaping objective that matches the natural shape of root canals, uh, philosophically it makes sense to me that that's why we have fewer problems, that's why we need fewer files, uh, fewer steps, and et cetera, to, to prepare canals to the shaping objective.